Well, hi again, everybody. My name is Greg Anderson, and this is the Good Timekeeping Show with Greg Anderson. Hey, today it's another watch review. This is not a G-Shock watch, but it's another Casio watch, and it's kind of an in-depth review, so let's go right into it. All right, let's take a look at our watch case today, and today I want to focus on this watch right here. This is the Casio Protrek PRW50Y. I bought this from someone in Japan, so I don't know that it's quite readily available uh, easily on the U.S. market. But I found it through eBay, and uh, it was pretty easy for someone to send it from Japan. Uh, this has some nice features on it. It has the triple sensor from Casio. So that's a barometer, a thermometer, and also a compass. Those are, those are the three sensors. And using that barometer, it also will give you altitude readings. Like many of the Casio watches that I like to feature, this one has tough solar. So there's a solar cell built into the face of the watch, and that allows it to automatically charge the power supply. So with any luck, you can go for years and years and years and not have to worry about changing batteries on this watch. Also, it has uh, the multiband 6 functionality. So what multiband 6 is, it's, uh, it means there's a built-in radio receiver in this watch, and it will receive atomic time information from any of six transmitters in different parts of the world. There's one in China, there are two in Japan, also one in the UK, one in Germany, and of course the one that I like here in the United States is WWVB in Fort Collins, Colorado. So if you're within range of those, this will receive time and date data and keep itself updated automatically. If you're not within range of those, it'll run as a normal quartz watch, accurate to within 15 seconds a month. But again, with Atomic Time Multiband 6, It'll be accurate to within fractions of a second every day. It will update itself every day and just run a one wonderful feature. I like that on all my, all my other Casio watches that have multi-band six. And since I bought this watch from Japan, it came with all the regular Casio packaging. It was just fine, it had everything I, I ordered. But the instructions that came with it were written in Japanese. And well, that's not a big deal. I, I can download the instructions for this from the Casio website in English. And the module is 5620, so if I looked that up, I, I, I had it just fine. But I thought it would be fun to just take this right out of the box and start playing with it. Because, you know, I've got these other G-Shock watches and other Casio watches. I thought for sure, if I just played with this watch, I would figure out how to set up everything anyway. And I was wrong, because one thing that I wasn't used to that differentiates this watch from the other Casio watches I have so far, this one has a crown here that uh, is used to set up a lot of the, lot of the different settings. So uh, if I didn't know how to use that crown, I really couldn't figure it out much by myself. I had to read the instructions. So let's just dive in and I'll show you everything I know so far about this watch. Okay, first of all, Casio says it has 11 modes. 11 modes. And that has to do something with the, uh, the triple sensor and some of the other things that are in here. So uh, this would be the, the button that you would normally press to change modes. Right now it's in the normal timekeeping mode. And you can see the analog hands are doing their thing. And then down here in this digital display, well, I can have it do three different things here in this normal timekeeping mode. Right now it's showing the abbreviation for the day of the week and the month and the date. So that's one thing you can show. If I push this button up here on the left side, then this will take away the, the day of the week. It still shows me the, the month and the date, but this is actually a barometric pressure change indicator. So what it's telling me is the barometric pressure has jumped way up since a few hours ago. So normally it would be kind of a solid line, either a, a line that would be kind of straight if the pressure has held uh, held the same pressure, or it'll maybe trend downward or trend upward. This is trying to show you a trend upward, but a very, very rapid uh, rise in barometric pressure earlier, a few hours ago, and a little more stable since then. That's what that's showing. And then if I push this again, um, I can also have just the hours, minutes, seconds, and then AM and PM markers there, uh, in addition to the, the analog time. So those are the three timekeeping mode settings. Now the next mode down here, this gets into the barometer. So right here you have that same pressure trend indicator right there in this display. And right here is a digital readout of the barometric pressure for where I am right now. Uh, I, I had to calibrate this and that's an easy thing to do. 
just to make sure that uh, right out of the box, it, it didn't necessarily show the barometric pressure for where I was because it's a little bit altitude dependent. And I'm sure this watch was made closer to sea level. Uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm about 5,000 feet where I am. So once I set that up, uh, I start getting accurate barometric pressure readings. And this is something you can easily adjust if it's not showing the right barometric pressure where you are. Now, maybe you have something already that shows you the correct barometric pressure for you where you are, or you could uh, look up weather stations in your area. Another good resource is maybe the nearest airport that's close to where you live. You can find out what the barometric pressure is for those. Right now it's showing that barometric pressure in inches of mercury, but there is a way to change that to, uh, is it hectopascals? I'm, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Hectopascals. Yeah, so you have that, you know, that's kind of, you know, metric versus non-metric. And if I want to, I can use this crown. I See, I just kind of untightened it right there. And if I pull it out, this is where it allows me to adjust this. So if I find out that whatever the, the watch was showing was not quite right, and I want to kind of synchronize this barometric pressure with a known weather instrument in my area, uh, once I've once I've pulled this crown all the way out, I can either rotate it counterclockwise to, to make those settings go down, the, the numbers go down, or back up again to make it go up. I happen to know that that's pretty accurate to where I am, and if I push this back in, now it's, uh, it's going to show me, you know, just normal. But if I pull that back out, and if I push this button down here, this is where it allows me to select my units either as uh, inches of mercury or hectopascals. So that's kind of my, my setting for metric versus non-metric units there. And those are, the, those are the adjustments you can make, again, pulling that crown out. All right, well, the next mode, if I go here, press this button, would be the temperature. And so this is, yeah, there's a thermometer in the watch. And uh, again, if you think that this temperature reading is not quite right, you can adjust it the same way. Pull the crown out and make that go up or down in 0.2 degrees in increments for Fahrenheit. Uh, or if I push this button here again, then I can change it to Celsius. So I have those adjustments there. Now, one of the things about having a thermometer on this watch is if you're wearing it, it's not necessarily going to show you the accurate temperature for, for where you are because uh, it's, going to, it's going to be affected by your body temperature. So if you really want a, an accurate uh, you know, ambient temperature for where you are, you might want to just take the watch off for a few minutes, leave it to where, where, where you want to take that reading. So don't leave it like sitting right, right out in the sun, uh, but you know, put it in a shaded area somewhere where there's airflow and you think that's, you know, that's the reading you want to take. And leave it there for you know, five, 10 minutes and you'll get an accurate reading. But if you're wearing it, again, your body temperature will affect uh, what the what the readout is. The next mode, if I push this button down here, uh, well, this is where you have the ability to save some uh, some information about altitude. I'll get I'll get into that in a moment. But this uh, this is where you can recall the information that you've saved. So you can save specific uh, specific moments, and it will record both the the, the time, date, and and the altitude uh, in that moment. And you can kind of scroll through those by pushing this button down here. So that's the first one. Here's the second one from another date. The third one, and again, it flashes the date, and then it also flashes the, uh, the altitude and the time when that reading was taken. If I get to the end of these that are saved, then it gives me the maximum for, uh, since I've reset it, this is telling me that on that particular date and time, uh, that's when I had the maximum altitude reading for this watch. And then over here is the minimum one. And this is, this is actually showing me, I think this is probably from the factory. So that's kind of a default uh, date, you know, January 1st of 2010, I guess, when, when the watch was first put into service at 670 feet above sea level. And that's not really accurate to, to anywhere I've been with this watch. So I should probably reset that. But anyway, that's just showing you some of the extremes that it's already recorded on here. And I can reset that when I want to. And then this also will uh, calculate an ascent for me uh, if I were climbing, you know, or hiking or something, uh, and also a descent. So those are some things that right now, I, you know, I'm not doing a lot of hiking or, or biking or climbing and changing altitudes, but uh, something maybe I could address later as far as the best way to use 
uh, the, you know, saving those values and uh, recalling them later. But that's one of the one of the features here when you recall. And you'll notice as I change modes, this little indicator right here points to different things on this dial to show you what mode you're in. I'm going to change modes again. Here's your stopwatch. It's a 24 hour stopwatch. So if I start it here, it's just going to keep going, showing me hours, minutes, seconds, and hundreds of a second. It'll go all the way up to 24 hours and then it'll reset to zero and keep going unless I've stopped it. So uh, I can stop it right here with this button on the lower right. I can do split time by pushing this button on the upper right. And uh, you know, the, the, it's still going, but it's just showing me a split time. Uh, okay, keep it going. Here I can stop it. And with this button, I can reset it. So pretty standard as far as stopwatches go on digital watches. Um, this is a countdown timer. And for this, I pull the crown out to adjust however many minutes I want it to count down. It will count down anywhere from one minute all the way up to 60 minutes. So full minutes is what you can choose. And there's your countdown timer there. And you'll notice when I do some of these functions, the hands automatically move out of the way so that I can get an unobstructed view of this LCD window. So the next mode is the alarm mode. And so with this, there are five alarms and also the hourly signal. In this case, they're all turned on. I can scroll forward with this button or backward with this button to show me what all those alarms are. Uh, the hourly signal, of course, if I want to shut that off, it's this button on the upper left side to turn that on or off. And same with all of these alarms on or off using that button up there. Now, if I want to change the alarm setting, uh, choose the alarm I want to change, and then I pull the crown out and there it will allow me to scroll backwards or forwards. And if I scroll it a bit and let go, then it'll just keep on going. And you see, as it gets down to the, to the next hour, it's just going to keep adjusting the hour as it's adjusting the minutes. So perhaps uh, I didn't want to do it that way. If I push this button on the lower left side, then I can just adjust the hour and that might make it a little easier for me to get to, to the setting I want a little bit faster. Um, but those are your settings for the alarm. And then once I've got it set again, it's either on or off using that button there. So next mode world time. And so now for the world time mode right now, the uh, second hand has, has pointed up straight up to the 12 for just a moment to show me that was the time zone it selected. And uh, maybe you can see right up there the abbreviation uh, UTC. So that's Greenwich time. So right now my world time zone is set to UTC. So the second hand showed me that by pointing to that time zone. All your time zone adjustments are, are managed using, using these indicators, these abbreviations that are all around the dial. These little, little three three letter abbreviations for different major cities in these different time zones. So right now, since I'm showing UTC uh, on the analog hands, it's showing me HT for my home time zone down here in the digital display. So that's how it does world time on this. Now, if I wanted to change the time zone that I'm showing in my with my world time, then I pull this crown out and now it's flashing city. And this is where I can scroll ahead and it will again point to some of these other time zone markers. So if I set it ahead to say here, uh, Hong Kong. Okay. Now you can see it's, uh, it's got the hands rolling, uh, scrolling around to show the local time in Hong Kong. And if I push that crown in, now it's going to show me uh, again on the analog hands, there's the Hong Kong time. And then in that uh, digital display, it's my home time zone. Now let's say I'm showing this other time zone and let's say that they have uh, daylight saving time there. So uh, it's not necessarily going to show that automatically on here, but if I pull the crown out, okay. And there again, it's showing me that Hong Kong is the, the time zone I've selected. If I push this button right here, then it's going to allow me to have daylight saving time on or off in that time zone. And I make that adjustment again, just by turning this crown again, if the crown is pulled all the way out for that. So I'm going to leave that off because I don't think they have daylight saving time in Hong Kong. Okay. And I'm back here. Now, if I wanted to, I could easily swap my home time time zone with my world time selected time zone by pressing and holding this button here on the upper 
left side. So let's see what happens when I do that. Holding it down, okay? And it's got a little symbol kind of, so it's supposed to show arrows changing, you know, swapping home time with my world time right there. And so that it just did that right there and I can swap it back doing it the same way. Hold that button down and there you go. I get a kick out of the fact that uh, with this watch, the hour hand can move completely independently of the other hands. In fact, all, all four of these hands, this indicator here, second hand, hour hand, minute hand, all seem to be able to move independent of each other and you don't get that on every watch. So it's kind of fun to have them, you know, all kind of racing around at their own, doing their own thing. <laughs> Another thing you can do, let's say that I, I you know, I, I changed to another time zone here for my world time, but I want to go back to the default UTC or Greenwich time. Then if I hold this button over here, just hold it down and it flashes UTC. If I hold it long enough, then it did go back to my default now of UTC for my world time. And there's my home time still, still on display down there. Another note here, uh, since the world time is only shown on the analog hands here, you might not know, is that AM or PM. The way you know that uh, is to just tap on this button here on the lower right side. If I tapped on that, then that second hand is going to race around and park for just a few seconds on an indicator here. This one actually indicates PM and there's one over there that indicates AM. So world time is kind of a fun mode with this watch. The next mode is uh, radio control. So what this is showing me, and I'm sorry that the analog hands are getting in the way here, but this is showing me the last time that the multiband six um, function was able to properly receive and process the data for atomic time and, and date. So this is telling me that that happened today, uh, you know, just a, a little more than an hour ago. That's because I did it manually uh, a little more than an hour ago, but normally that uh, that updating or that you know checking itself with the atomic time reception would happen automatically um, up to six times, and it, and it happens overnight. It starts at midnight. Uh, it'll turn on that receiver and try to receive that atomic time information, and if it doesn't work within ooh, maybe somewhere around five or ten minutes, it's going to stop trying, and it will try again at one o'clock two o'clock, three o'clock, up to six times overnight. Now, if it, as soon as it's successful, it's going to stop trying again until the next night at midnight. And this is just a way for it to uh, display the last time it was able to do that. Now, if I wanted to disable that automatic reception of the uh, multiband six, this is where I do it right here. I pull the crown out and right there, automatic RC for radio controlled, either on or off. And I, I leave it on all the time because I get good reception where I am. But if you're in a place where, uh, you know, you've manually set the time, you don't want it to be changed to atomic time, you can turn this off. Or if you're in an area where uh, the multiband six, you're just out of range and it doesn't work anyway, you can save a little bit of battery power by leaving that off. I'm going to leave it on. If you want to, right here on this screen, initiate a manual time reception at any time. This is where you start. Start on this screen and then you just hold this button down over here on the lower right side, hold it down for a couple seconds, RC blinks, and then as soon as you get RC with that little exclamation point, that's when it's gonna to start to try to receive its atomic time information. And again, this could take anywhere from two to 10 minutes to properly receive. And so, you know, I'm, I don't think I'll sit here and wait for it to receive because, you know, I've got some things that may be causing radio interference. See, right now it's telling me that it's, it's, it's got a level one reception, which is not very good. Usually level one is not good enough for it to properly receive all the data it's trying to process. If you get up to level three, that's better. But again, I think with all this stuff I've got going on, oh, level two, okay. Oh yeah, okay, it got up to level three. Oh, level two, all right. So it's showing me that reception is not perfectly solid where I am, but that's what it'll try to do for a few minutes until it's able to receive its atomic time data. All right, so I pressed that button and rather than changing modes, it just took me back to, it, it just canceled the atomic time reception when I pushed that button. So push it again, and now I'm back to my home time screen. Now, if I happen to be anywhere within, you know, you can see this is showing me that I've kind of skipped around to some of the other modes. If rather than scroll through all of those modes to get back to the regular timekeeping mode, uh, I just wanna go directly to the, uh, timekeeping mode, I can just press and hold this button down here on the lower left side. Uh, time blinks, and then uh, as, soon as, I, as soon as it beeps, you know, it kind of stops blinking, then it takes me right back to normal timekeeping mode. 
All right, in order to get directly to the altimeter mode, you don't use this mode button here. You start with the timekeeping mode right here and you push this button on the lower right side and that takes you directly to the altimeter mode. This is a barometric altimeter. So the way that it is calculating your altitude is by uh, starting with the barometer and as the air pressure changes, it calculates a change in altitude accordingly. Now, that may seem kind of old fashioned to you, but it's been used in the aviation uh, business for, for many, many decades already. So uh, barometric altimeters have proven themselves. It may not seem quite as accurate as like GPS or something like that, but it actually works out pretty well as long as you start with the correct calibration. So pilots uh, normally will check in with the airport before they take a flight or before they land at that airport and find out what is the barometric pressure at that airport and then they will uh, calibrate their, bar uh, their barometric altimeter accordingly. So uh, as, the, as the barometric pressure changes, this might uh, drift a little bit from what, uh, what you may have set it to previously in exactly the same location. So in my case, you know, the barometric pressure has changed today, the weather is changing today, and this is about 20, 20 feet below what I actually set it to uh, earlier. So I'm gonna pull this crown out and this is going to allow me to adjust that, fine tune that up to what I think is a more accurate representation of the altitude right where I am. If I push this button here while this is blinking and the crown is pulled out, then this allows me uh, a, few, a few adjustments. This refers to the interval. If it's taking uh, readings automatically, like you're hiking and you're trying to, you know, to keep, keep track of your, of your altitude during your hike, this is where you can select the interval either every five seconds or every two minutes that it's going to take a reading. Uh, this is your differential. So uh, you can actually use the second hand on this watch to display if you've been uh, climbing or descending. And then here, uh, units. So if you, want, if you want the display to be in feet or meters, this is where you make that selection. And then you're back to there. So I'm going to push this crown in and my settings are complete there. Now, when I'm in the altimeter mode, if I want to record the altitude at any given time, I can push this button and just hold this button on the lower right until I see that REC for record. And now it has recorded my, uh, my date and time and altitude for that. And that's gonna come up when I go back here to the, uh, to the recall mode. It's gonna be one of the, one of the things that's, uh, that's stored here in my various things that I have recorded. Another feature of the altimeter mode is it can show me my differential from where I started to, to where I am. So uh, here it's just showing the second hand is just doing its normal thing as a second hand. But if I push this button on the upper left side, then it's showing me my differential. And there's a small scale right in there that's showing me uh, some numbers. And so right now the differential is set to show me uh, each one of those numbers represents uh, a thousand meters. Uh, up or down. In this case, it's showing me that I've gone up, uh, you know, a few thousand meters. But if I get into the uh, setup here and show you, I can change that differential to either a 1000 meter scale or a 100 meter scale. And when I do that and I go back there, now it's, it's gone way out of range because now, you know, that's going to be uh, 10 times the amount on the scale. So rather than showing right there, it's going to show me something way uh, off the scale. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to use the second hand to show you your differential e either up or down. And again, if you'd rather not have it show you a differential, you just want the second hand to be normal. Again, push this button up there. And now when I go back out to timekeeping mode and come back to altitude mode, the second hand is still operating as a second hand because I've disabled that uh, function for now. Also, you know, if I happen to be in timekeeping mode, let's go to the barometric mode. This also allows me to use the second hand either to show me a differential or second hand movement. If again, push that button there. And now it's showing me barometric pressure differential. Now I've, it, it looks like it's held steady, uh, but it can show me whether it's been going up or down using the second hand. Again, when I'm in the bar barometer mode, if I just use that to select the second hand function in this mode. So let's get back to the timekeeping mode now. And by the way, when I switch into regular timekeeping mode, see, uh, just for a moment, the, the letter H was flashing right there. Let me try that again. Go get back to timekeeping H. 
that was an indication of the battery charge state. So it could be an M for medium or H for high. If it's L for low, then uh, you should charge it up because some of the functions go away if it's too low. But that's, that's where you're gonna find out what is the battery charge like, just right there momentarily. That's what you get. So this is where I wanna show you the compass mode. It's this button up here to get into the compass. And uh, all right, so what it's showing me right now, and, and this is not necessarily accurate um, because I don't have the watch perfectly flat. Uh, for a better reading, I'd wanna keep the watch, you know, kind of keep the face of the watch horizontal to the ground. Although you can't see it as well uh, on, on the camera when I do that, but uh, here's what I'm going to do. So what this is telling me, uh, the, the, the second hand works as a needle that's pointing north all the time. So as I turn the watch, turn the watch around, that second hand is going to keep trying to adjust itself to keep pointing north. And then there'll be a reading down here in the digital display that's going to show me the degrees, uh, you know, whether it's north, south, east, west, northeast. <laughs> what this is telling me right now is, hey, your, uh, your second hand is pointing straight north, but if you are looking straight down at this watch and you're using the 12 o'clock reference, uh, then then what you, you had the watch pointed at, on its, and it times out after a minute. So what this is telling me is that uh, the 12 o'clock, uh, if, if I'm going from here to here and following that direction all the way out, then it's a heading of 49 degrees. That's northeast, you know, 40, 49 degrees or so on the map. Whereas, again, the second hand is pointing north on this. So as I, as I move this around, you know, this is telling me that, uh, you know, now I've got the watch, the 12 o'clock pointed eastward at a heading of 84 degrees or 83 degrees. So, you know, that, that, so you can have some fun with that. And again, after about a minute, it times out and takes you back to your normal timekeeping mode. Now, again, the compass is not like your GPS. It's not necessarily going to show you true north. It's going to be magnetic north. So there are some ways to calibrate this based on if you know what is the declination, I believe that's what it's called. Uh, you know, the, the difference between true north and magnetic north where you are, there's a way to set that uh, in the watch either, you know, by entering a number of degrees or you can actually do a calibration uh, and uh, you get into that by, you know, you, you push a button and then you turn the watch 180 degrees and it prompts you to do that. So I'm not going to show you all of that right now, but that is something to keep in mind. It's a magnetic compass. It's not, um, you know, a true, a true north compass like you might get on a GPS receiver. Also, the hands, uh, you know, I told you how all those hands can move independently of each other, and that relies on magnetism to keep the hands properly aligned. Now, I'm told on this that the hands will automatically align themselves from time to time, but if you wanted to do a manual calibration just to make sure that all those hands are, uh, are, are pointing to the right place, the way to manually align those hands is you're in regular timekeeping mode here. I'm going to pull this crown out here. And this is where it would normally prompt you to change your home city setting. But instead of that, I'm going to push and hold this button down here on the lower, lower right and hand set. And if I hold that long enough, and there it goes, I heard a beep, hand adjust, and then I let go. And so now the hands are going to go through a little process where independently of each other, they're all going to point straight up to the 12 o'clock position, including this one here, the mode indicator. Now uh, that just, uh, you know, is pointing straight up. Now you see the second hand is pointing straight up. The hour hand is trying to get there. And as soon as it gets there, the, uh, the minute hand is going to try to get there as well. And if you interrupt this process before they're all pointed up straight at the 12, then the hand alignment not, might not turn out to be right. But if you wait until this point, and it's prompting you to push the crown back in, and all those hands look like they're properly aligned, all pointed straight up, um, then you're good to go. I'm going to push this and okay. Now I know my hand alignment is right. And that's going to be confirmed right now by, you know, right there, they're, they're showing the same time that's in the digital display. And while we're talking about the hands, let's just, uh, introduce this scenario where maybe the, the hands are blocking the view of this LCD window here. If you want those to be moved out of the way, you can press the light button, which is this button here. And while you're holding that, press this mode button. So if I do that, 
there, that will make the hands move out of the way momentarily. With some of my other watches, they'll stay out of the way longer than they will with this one. But uh, that is one way to make it clear out so you can see this readout better and do what you want to do. Okay, once again, let's talk about this crown. Now, normally it would be, you kind of push it in a little bit as you rotate it clockwise, and you're just like you're screwing it in a little bit, and it'll start to give you some resistance, and that means that it's locked into place and, and you're okay there. Don't, don't, you know, turn that, rotate that too hard, because you don't want to strip the screws. You don't really need to point it that hard. So that's, that's how the watch is normally going to be. But if I want to get into some of the settings, then I'm going to have to uh, unscrew this, rotating this counterclockwise until, and you can tell that as you turn it, it's still getting a little bit of resistance from kind of the uh, the threaded, uh, you know, screw type of stuff that's in, you know, inside there. But if I turn it uh, enough, then at a certain point, it just sort of comes loose, and you can sort of feel when it comes loose a little bit. And there it goes. So now it feels much looser. And still, even, even here, yes, it's loose, but you're still not going to make any changes in the settings until you pull it out, and it kind of snaps out a little bit. And now you're into some of the setups. So from the regular timekeeping mode, first thing you're going to want to do if, this, if you just got this watch is change the home city setting here. And again, you're going to rely on these little abbreviations around the outside. Right now it's pointed to Denver but I could scroll ahead by rotating this uh, clockwise here, and, you know, and then that's gonna get to Chicago and New York City and some of these others. And again, if something happened to this, uh, this bezel here and you couldn't read those, and then you'd have a little bit of trouble. You'd have to just kind of <laughs> fiddle with it until it gets to the right place. So I'm gonna set that back to my home city, my home time zone, which is the mountain time zone, which is Denver, okay? Now, if you ever find it necessary to manually set the time, you start here at this screen, the regular timekeeping mode, pull this crown out, and there where it's starting to flash city, instead of setting the city, push this button here on the upper left side, and now it flashes hours and minutes. And so here you can, you can scroll ahead or backwards using the crown. And when I get that to where I want it to be, see, then I can push this button here on the lower left side, and now I can just adjust the hour with this, push it again, and here I can manually change the date. So the year, month, and date. Oh, I'm making all those adjustments as I please, and then push this crown in to stop that from happening. So when you do the manual setup for the time and the date, just keep in mind that that's going to be replaced by the actual time and date data that it receives from uh, from the multiband six reception the next time it's able to do that. But if uh, you know again you you don't want the the multiband six time or you're in an area where multiband six reception doesn't work, you can manually set the time using this uh, using this setup right here. All right. So whether or not you wanted to set the time manually, what I'm going to do is push this crown in and get us back to timekeeping, pull it out again, and get us back to where the, the city is flashing to set, select your time zone. And from this point, uh, let's get into the other setup items. I push this button down here. This is where you can select uh, daylight saving time to be displayed automatically, or since the crown is already out, I can also select a daylight saving to always be off or always be on or automatically displayed. So those are those settings right there. I'm gonna leave it on automatic. Okay, next, push the mode button. And this is where you can set it to either have a little bit of a beep every time you change modes, and most of the time when you press buttons or you start and stop the stopwatch, it's gonna, gonna make a little, a little beep, and that's what that key with a little musical note means. Or if I turn this, then I can mute that. So it's not going to make a beep every time I push a button. Uh, it will still have a little beep when the alarms go off, when the hourly signal goes off, or when, uh, when the countdown timer ends, but it's just not going to have as many beeps if I put that to mute. So that's where I make that adjustment. Push this again, and this is where uh, it's, got a, it's got a backlight that e either can come on automatically or not, and I can set that to on or off using this here. When it's on, then the watch has a little sensor inside it, and when you turn it up towards your face like that, and when it's in the dark, that little automatic uh, backlight will come on, and I'll show you that in a moment. Otherwise, you can make the backlight happen by pushing this button here for the backlight. 
As for that backlight, it'll either stay on for one and a half seconds or three seconds, and you get to select right here uh, whether you want it for one and a half or three seconds. Push this again, and now I can either have a 12 hour or 24 hour display in the digital display of this watch. And that's where I make that selection. And then this is the power save. I want to either have that on or off. What that does is after 10 p.m., if the watch is left in the dark for more than an hour or so, then some of the functions start to shut off. Uh, first of all, the, the LCD display will go blank just to save a little bit of power. Or, uh, you know, you can have it so it doesn't do that automatically. Now, when your watch goes into sleep mode, there are three ways to get it out of sleep mode. One would be to, uh, well, take it back out so it's in the light again. Uh, another is to press any of the buttons on the watch. That'll take it out of sleep mode. And the third way would be to just uh, move it around a bunch because there's a, a motion sensor unit inside of it. So when it knows that it's being used, all those functions that may have turned off because of sleep mode will come back. So again, you can power save on or off. And okay, there I am back to my, my, my initial setup screen. And this is the stuff I couldn't figure out until I knew that the crown was, was part of this setup. Now, if I push this back in, okay, and it's not, uh, it's not prompting me to set anything anymore. And in this mode right here, even though this is kind of loose and you can just spin this one way or the other pretty freely right now, um, this may affect the water resistance of the watch. So if you want it to be fully water resistant based on, you know, the specifications that it's supposed to be, you might want to gently, you gently push this in while you're turning it clockwise, just kind of screwing it in, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey kind of thing, and starts to feel like you're screwing something in. And then you, you can feel some resistance. And when you feel that resistance, don't, don't, you don't have to crank it too hard. And now, that's tightly turned, and now the, the full water resistance is available for this watch. This watch is rated for 10 bar or 100 meter water resistance, so that's pretty good for most activities, unless you're doing some really intense scuba diving. I think you're pretty good to go as far as water resistance on this watch. And you can see that it has a nice soft silicone band, and that feels kind of nice. This is a stainless steel back, but it's it's kind of a, a softer feel uh, on there. I don't know exactly what that finish is, but it just kind of feels soft. Now, I should also point out that with your typical G-Shock watch, see how the back of it has kind of a plate here with four tiny screws holding the back of the watch on. And, you know, and then the watch band is uh, held on by you know, a couple screws there. So, you know, you're, you're used to that if you're used to G-Shock watches. This one is a little bit different. See, this back plate here has four screws to hold it on but the, the plate extends out and actually the, uh, looks, it looks as though the, the watch band is mounted to this same piece of metal. So I'm not sure how that would affect things if you're gonna try and add some sort of third party aftermarket watch band to this watch, but I just thought I'd show you that. All right, let's just see how much this weighs. I'll put it on the kitchen scale here and we're coming in about 70 grams, not bad. How does that compare to say this G-Shock watch here? Okay, pr pretty much the same. How about one of these popular G-Shock watches? Oh, this is the heavier one from Japan. Okay, so those are all about the same. Here's a nice uh, nice G-Shock watch. Here's the Casio Royale, the metal version here. So yeah, it's pretty comparable with all of those. And here's a, here's a big old digital version of a triple sensor watch from Casio. And yeah, it's a little bit more. So yeah, not bad at all for the weight of this watch. And finally, let's take a look at this backlight. I've got it in the automatic mode, so if I just turn it up as though I'm looking at it, then that uh, backlight will automatically activate. And again, what this looks like in the camera may not be a good representation of what it would look like to your eyes, but this gives you a little bit of an indication there. And you see you do have some glow-in-the-dark material on the hands as well. Now, as usual, Casio has a few different versions of this watch, different color combinations, maybe a negative LCD display instead of this positive LCD display, lots of things going on here. Uh, so just look for the PRW50 model watches. Also, there's a PRW60 watch, which is very similar. It's technically a different module, but uh, the, the instructions, all the functions and features are the same, looks a little bit different. And it, it, was, it came out just like a year earlier. So uh, between the PRW60 and PRW50 model, Models, you can use these instructions on all of those different uh, models of watches and you should get the same results as far as what you want to do 
with your watch. All right, thanks for joining me. And you know, I've got some other watches I haven't talked about yet. So there will soon be yet another new episode of The Good Timekeeping Show.